For some time now, we have been hearing about CBDC or central bank digital currencies on an almost daily basis. The purpose of this video is to explain CBDC in very simple terms, together with what kind of financial animal CBDC is, why it has been grabbing so many headlines lately, as well as some of its major potential implications for the financial ecosystem. The past few years have witnessed many innovations designed to revolutionize money. First, in 2009, Bitcoin offered a vision of a money without any authority, managed instead by computer code and algorithms. However, it continues to be subject to massive volatility, preventing it from becoming a means of exchange for the masses. And this is the precisely the reason why the private sector came up with stablecoins, the most emblematic being Facebook's now defunct DM. Faced with this new competition, central banks, which have traditionally been responsible for issuing currency, could not just sit on their hands. And they began working on central bank digital currencies, with the promise of delivering an innovative digital form of cash, e-cash, with all the guarantees of central bank money. This is a massive initiative, and two-thirds of central banks consider that they're likely to, or might possibly, issue retail CBDC in either the short or medium term, according to the Bank for International Settlements. Another factor that has probably made banks intensify their CBDC efforts is the rapid decrease in the use of cash in different parts of the world. Today, unbanked population, and there is a significant unbanked population even in the most developed parts of the world, today, these unbanked populations can participate in the economy by getting paid in and paying with cash, making them completely dependent upon cash. But in a future where cash has disappeared from use, these populations will be completely excluded from the economy. However, if there was an electronic form of cash, e-cash, that citizens could access and use without having a bank account, in the same way that they can access physical cash without having a bank account today. Then, these populations could continue to participate in an economy without physical cash. Let's continue our central bank digital currency journey by comparing it to stablecoins and tokens like Bitcoin. The key distinctions here are liability and stability. A CBDC is a liability of a central bank, which therefore cannot default. A stablecoin is not a liability of a central bank, but is typically backed by a reserve asset, the US dollar, for example, attempting to peg its value to, again, for example, the US dollar. Hence, a well-designed coin that is pegged to a stable fiat currency, such as, again, the US dollar, will be just as stable as that fiat currency. And tokens such as bitcoins are not backed by a reserve asset, nor do they attempt to peg their value to a fiat currency. And the value of, for example, bitcoin is dictated by market conditions and the demand for bitcoin, and ultimately the trust in its underlying system. Another potential impact of CBDC could be the financing of commercial bank loans. A commercial bank typically uses deposits to extend loans to its customers. This is the fractional reserve system responsible for the bulk of money creation in our economies. However, there is a risk that when CBDCs are introduced, consumers will prefer to hold their deposits in this new form of e-cash rather than with banks. And this would mean that the commercial bank balance sheet would be reduced by the amount of present-day deposits that will be replaced by CBDC or eCash in the future. And this in turn would mean less credit or more expensive credit and have a serious impact on the economy. Central banks are very much aware of this issue and are factoring it into their design. For example, by ensuring that CBDC bears no interest or by limiting the maximum amount an individual can hold to prevent disintermediation from occurring. <music> the 
The originality of CBDC, issued by a central bank, is its public money nature. Compared to money not issued by a central authority or commercial money, CBDC is a public good, serving the public interest. This means that it should function as an instrument of sovereignty and foster financial inclusion everywhere, both in developed and emerging economies. No one should be left behind, and e-cash should be made available to everyone, regardless of wealth or degree of tech literacy. CBDC can also facilitate government operations to distribute the benefits or stimulus payments. By harnessing the benefits of programmable money, it can choose to issue cash that may only be used at certain merchants or for a certain time. The payment guru Dave Birch often says, if it's not offline, it's not cash. And this is an important statement. A key characteristic of cash today is that you can transact anywhere, anytime. Whereas other means of payment may fail due to a system outage or a lack of network coverage, or worse, a natural disaster, cash cannot fail. Users know they can transact freely at any time. All central banks agree that CBDC must replicate this key feature and are working on tech solutions to ensure ironclad security for off-flight transactions while preventing unauthorized money creation or double spending. The number one concern raised by people and businesses around the world is how a CBDC system can protect privacy. Cash today is anonymous. Fortunately, there are a number of tech solutions available to solve this issue. First, in a CBDC intermediated model, the central bank would not have visibility over individual transactions and balances. Only the user's commercial bank would have access to this information. Second, there are technological ways of achieving complete anonymity and preventing any traceability for smaller amounts, if central banks so choose. This would allow them to grandfather this benefit of cash for limited amounts, striking the right balance between privacy and combating money laundering. Researchers are also exploring even more efficient innovative techniques for protecting privacy, such as zero-knowledge proofs. With 90% of the world's central banks exploring CBDCs, the potential implications for the current financial ecosystem will be massive. Today, we use a plethora of payment solutions, day in, day out. And it seems fair to assume that we will also use various types of currencies in the future. We hope that this short video has demystified CBDC a little as we rush headlong towards that banking and payments future.